Hey there folks, I'm Joshua, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make a simple cheat mod for Against the Storm, a uh, roguelike city builder by Aramite Games. Um, I started out here reading a blog post by another Redditor uh, who had come up with uh, this simple mod to disable pausing. This was Gnome de la Plume. Uh, and I went through his code and saw what he was doing and how he was doing it and uh, thought that I could try uh, myself. So uh, he's doing a couple of things. Uh, first of all, he's using DN Spy, an assembly editor, to take a look at the actual game code. So let's start there. Let's take a look around. Um, we're going to go ahead and open the assembly C sharp.dll in the against the storm data managed folder. So this is the assembly that contains all the game code. And if we crack this open, we can start to see, well, there's Aramite. There's the name of the company that makes the game. So that's a good start. We can see buildings, characters, uh, some controller stuff. There are, there are some glades things. Uh, what I'm going to try to do for this demo is to give myself uh, all wildcard blueprint picks throughout the game. So instead of having to pick from a random collection of four, every time I get a blueprint, I instead want to be able to select exactly the building I want. So, uh, part of the modding process or the coding process is to go through a lot of this, uh, a lot of these namespaces and figure out exactly what you're looking for, like what does what, right? Uh, I've done that ahead of time. So I can tell you that what we want to look at is under the Aramite.services namespace, there's a service called Reputation Reward Service. Let's see if I can find that. So the Reputation Reward Service is the service which, when your reputation hits various thresholds, gives you rewards, in our case, the blueprints that we're looking for. Uh, and you can see here, the decompiler has turned the uh, IL of the assembly back into readable c -sharp code. Now, obviously, it's not formatted exactly the way the developer has it. This is all generated. But we can start to get a feeling for what's in the game uh, or in the game's code. So reputation reward service implements three interfaces here. Uh, I reputation reward service, I game service, I service. And then we've got some properties here. Pick pop-up requested, rewards to collect is a reactive property. Uh, we've got the reputation reward state here. Uh, each biome has its own blueprint config. Uh, and then a, each biome has its own reputation config. As we start to get into uh, the, the methods here, uh, here's one that's interesting, create reward. This is going to return a new reputation reward. So it looks like this is some sort of a struct or class which has a building name and a set. And let's see what else we have here. Um, let me double check which ones I'm looking for. Prepare initial points. Let's take a look at that. Prepare initial points. This one's interesting. So this runs at the start of a game. Um, if the state has the initial reputation picks granted bool set to true, uh, we return out of this function, which means this can only run once, right? Because it's then immediately setting that value to true on this next line. And then after that, it's going to subtract the value of the initial reputation rewards from the last granted reputation reward. So this tells us that this is an... Uh, whoop. This tells us that last granted reputation reward is an important variable for tracking uh, the granting of reward values. So initial reputation rewards here, this is a config value. This is going to be set to 3. And when we subtract this, this value gets set to negative 3. And then another part of the code <clears throat> will see that value and grant us our three initial picks. So we'd like to, uh, we'd like to change the way this prepare initial points works to instead of granting us three starter picks, grant us three wildcard picks. The other interesting function we need to override or amend here is, uh, I believe the next one is gonna be update regular reputation reward. Uh, so that actually is happening as a response to on reputation change. So this is an event handler, uh, which says when the reputation changes, and that's done through the reputation service, which is a separate service from the reputation reward service. Uh, this handler gets called, and we update the regular reputation reward, and then update the reputation pen penalty lowering. So when you hit a threshold, one of those little tiny, um, when you hit a threshold on the reputation bar, 
Uh, if there's a little blue dot, you get a reward and your uh, impatience goes down. Impatience is referred to as reputation penalty um, within the game's code. So we've got a lot of things we'd like to do now to figure out how to do them. Well, obviously we're going to need to uh, patch the game code somehow. And uh, for that, I'm going to be using the BepinX plugin loader. Now that's a little bit beyond the uh, scope of this video, but suffice it to say, this can take a DLL that you build uh, with something like Harmony, which is meant for patching games at runtime and load in whatever DLL or plugin you build. So look up BepinX uh, and uh, get that installed in your Against the Storm game directory. And then what we're gonna wanna do is put our, our DLL that we're gonna build right here in the plugins directory. Uh, we'll get to that in a moment. Um, the next thing I wanna talk about is the template I'm using here to get started. Uh, if we look at uh, GitHub slash ATS mod slash mod template, uh, this user uh, has provided a very nice mod template. Uh, we can see that there is a plugin.cs, which has some basic harmony code to uh, begin patching all of the attribute based harmony methods here. And they've got some standard setups here hook main controller setup, hook every game start. Uh, basically, this is uh, boilerplate, boilerplate code, but this is a nice starting point. So we're going to clone this re repository and customize it for our own use. Uh, so to do that, we're going to grab the clone uh, HTTPS URL. We're going to go into Visual Studio. Okay, we want to clone a repository. Uh, so we're going to clone the mod template, but I want to call this something else. So we're going to call it uh, josaway.ats.cheats. Okay, let's go ahead and clone that. Uh, now our repo exists here. So we want to open the folder view and start changing a few things. Uh, we're going to need to make changes in the CS project file here uh, first. So let's start there. Let's rename this to josaway.ats.cheats. And let's go in and take a look at what we've got. So uh, this template gives us a net standard to uh, assembly or a target framework here. We're gonna change the assembly name to josaway.ats.cheats. We're gonna change the description to cheat mod for against the storm by josaway. And uh, let's take a look at what else is in here. We've got some package references, some NuGet packages to BepinX and Unity Engine. That's good. Uh, we also have a assembly reference here to our game DLL, right? But it's got an MS build variable that is not defined because this would be different. Uh, this could be different on everybody's individual system. So we need to provide this value. Um, if we keep, take a look down here, there's something else that that's being used for. Essentially, after the build, there's a, uh, there's a post build task here, which is going to copy our DLL into our plugin directory. And if we had any assets, it would plug them or it would, it would copy them over to the assets directory as well. But this is a little handy dandy uh, post build uh, target, which is going to say every time we build, copy our, our custom plugin directly to the directory where BepinX will load it when the game launches. So that's fantastic. All we need to do now is provide this storm path directory. And on my system, that value uh, looks like this. So you can define a, uh, a build variable in, uh, in a CS project like this by simply creating a property under a property group with the name of the variable. So this storm path like bracket system maps to this dollar sign parentheses invocation. And for me on my system, the storm path is gonna be uh, program files x86 steam steam apps common against the storm uh, so then against the storm data manage assembly c sharp dll all that's going to be resolved correctly now uh, so now we need to swap out a folder view to uh, solution view and we need to actually open the cs project so let's open josway.ats.cheats and if we expand this out we should see uh, our assembly C sharp here should have been resolved. Let me build this real quick and see what it says. Okay, so we do have some problems here. 
Uh, but mostly those are related to our namespace. Looks like we do have the ability to resolve that. Okay, so that's fine. Uh, so let's take a look at these errors. Basically, this thing is complaining that it doesn't have these values. It doesn't, there's nothing to find for plugin info does not contain a definition for plugin good. So when we, uh, when we create a, um, when we edited the CS proj, these values should have been provided, except we've got a problem. We've got the wrong namespace. So let's change our namespace to josaway.ats.cheats. And now we can see there's our uh, assembly name and there's the version. So everything looks good now. And if we build this, the build succeeded. Let me go ahead and get the output window back. Uh, I realize at, th at this, uh, at this font size, some of this is going to be hard to read, but we can, we can actually watch it. Go ahead and build and succeed. And because of that uh, post-build task, if we go over to our BepidX and look in our plugins, we see that the, the DLL we just built, josway.ats.cheats, has been added here directly. So every time we build, we're going to update this inside the, uh, the, the directory where we need it, which is fantastic. Okay, so um, when you're using Harmony, you can create prefix or postfix methods that will be run before or after the original method. And if you write a prefix method, you can have it uh, return false to prevent the original method by the game's developers from running. So uh, we're gonna want to change, like I said, if we, uh, if we go back to DN, DN uh, spy, we're gonna wanna change on reputation changed and we're going to want to change prepare initial points. Um, where is that one? Well, it doesn't really matter. Uh, so I've already done the work ahead of time. I'll go through what I've actually done here. But uh, we're going to start by changing prepare initial points. Uh, so these methods here, we don't really care about these. These are the, the standard setup uh, methods generated by the uh, template developer. So we'll just give ourselves a little space and we'll put in the first of our pieces of code here. So, uh, with Harmony, again, uh, the mapping is done by the attributes uh, and this line of code right here. So, when we awake, when our plugin awakes, it's going to create a new Harmony or uh, instantiate the Harmony variable by invoking the create and patch all uh, with type of plugin, which is the class that we're in. So essentially, this wakes up Harmony, patches everything based on the attributes we've applied, and then the method, the awake method, completes by logging a little bit of information. So here's our uh, prepare initial points post patch, or I guess this should technically be a pre patch because it's a prefix. Uh, and we are going to pass in the aramite.services.reputation reward service. Uh, as well as the name of the prepare initial points method. So that's going to tell Harmony, hey, I want you to patch this method, prepare initial points, in this type, reputation reward service. And the patching happens at runtime. So as the game is running, uh, the Harmony engine goes into the runtime uh, in memory and patches this method for us. And we're going to need a uh, static method whenever you're patching and because we want to uh, return a boolean to decide whether or not to continue the uh, execution of the original method we're going to return a bool even though prepare initial points is a void uh, the other thing we're going to need is um, a reference to the reputation reward service instance and harmony will provide some uh, dependency injection here by using this keyword underscore underscore instance uh, there are a number of uh, convention-based DI variables available. The only one we care about here is the instance. So in the game code, we might write something like this.state. Uh, but here, because we're a static being patched in, we don't have access to the this keyword. So we need a reference to the instance, and Harmony gives it to us here. Uh, so we're going to also have the prefix attribute here, which tells Harmony that this, this method should run before the original method prepare initial points. What we're gonna do here is take a look at um, the original code. So the original code for prepare initial points looks like this. 
if this dot state dot initial reputation picks granted return we're going to want to copy that code into our method so if instance dot state dot initial reputation picks granted equals false uh, then we're going to well the, I I've changed the code around a little bit uh, they return immediately if they've already done it um, if they haven't done it they do these two lines of code they set the val I, and clicking around in this is a little bit <laughs> irksome they set the value to true and then they subtract that initial reputation rewards value of three from the last granted reputation reward. So in our code, we're gonna say, if we haven't done it yet, we're gonna set the initial reputation picks granted variable to true. And then instead of adjusting the last reputation rewards granted variable and detracting three from it, we're gonna leave it at zero, which is, an, which is its initial state. And we're instead going to invoke this method on the effect service, which I looked up and figured out how to do elsewhere. So now we're going to have serviceable.effectService.grantWildcardPick, and we're going to ask it to grant us three wildcard picks. So instead of the original three blueprint picks we got, we're getting three wildcard picks instead. Now I've got another piece of test code here. This is invoking the reputation service to add reputation points. It's going to set our initial reputation to 0.99F, which means if we get even a tiny tick of reputation from any source, we're going to go ahead and uh, increment to the first threshold, which should grant us another blueprint and reduce our uh, impatience by one, as well as doing probably some other stuff under the code uh, that I'm not super familiar with. Uh, the last thing we do in this method is return false. We do not want the original game method to run. We've replaced it with this method instead. So, okay, let's go ahead and build this. Build succeeded. And now we're going to go ahead and dive into the game and see what the result is. Uh, let's start a new game. It doesn't matter where. And let's take a look at if our code is working. Okay, so right off the bat, we see we've got uh, some wildcard picks and our initial reputation has been set to 0.99. So let's go ahead and look at our wildcard picks. Very nice. Okay. We can pick up to three of these. Uh, we have some, it looks like we have some uh, uh, harpies. So let's get a weaver going. And then the other two really don't matter. And now what we want to do is build ourselves up some harpy houses. Looks like we can build one harpy house. Uh, you know what? I didn't think this through. Let me abandon this and try again. We want to have more than one group show up. So we definitely need some newcomers. Let's get some additional materials here. Let's try that again. Uh, veterans, fine. It doesn't really matter. We need at least one other race, but so with new, two newcomers uh, or three newcomers, we should get another race. Let's embark there. Okay, so good. Now we can favor the harpies and build them some houses. Uh, let's see, there's nine of them. So let's go one, two, three, four should be enough. And then we'll build our uh, weaver and whatever else. This should allow us to generate enough happiness to generate the 0 0.01 that we need to see what happens when we hit this new blueprint reward. So if you guys understand how the game works, you're going to see I'm not going to get the, the wild card I want, but I just want to be able to verify that this whole setup works the way I think it does. Throw them in there for some happiness. Okay, and now they're generating happiness, so we're going to get a small tick of 0.11 reputation, and there we go. We ticked over to one. We now have a regular blueprint reward. So we've set ourselves up to be able to test um, now our code to replace this with a wildcard pick as well. Uh, but we haven't written the code for it yet, so let's get out of here and see if we can fix that. Okay, back into Visual Studio. Now what we want to do is override our update regular reputation reward method. So if we go back and look at uh, on reputation changed, 
Uh, this method takes in a float, the current reputation, and calls two methods, update regular reputation reward and update reputation penalty lowering. We don't care about the penalty stuff. We care about our rewards. So let's take a look at update regular reputation reward. Okay, so first it checks that the last granted reputation reward, remember this is tracking the reputations we've been granted, uh, is not greater than or equal to our current reputation points. If it is, then the change we had, uh, we were responding to, was not across the threshold, right? So like if you go from one to 1.01, 01, that doesn't grant you a new reputation, so this just returns, right? There's some change that happens over the course of uh, the engine ticks that updates those values multiple times, and sometimes they cross a threshold, and sometimes they don't. If, however, <clears throat> our points are greater than the last reputation reward, then we want to update re rating, waiting rewards, and if necessary, generate a new pick. If we look at update rate waiting rewards here, we're going to set the value on the rewards to collect reactive property, which undoubtedly has a number of subscribers that handle events when it changes, uh, with the count rewards to collect, which in turn counts regular rewards to correct, and uh, adds in something called this.state.wildpicks left. Count regular rewards to collect, goes over, loops over uh, the reputation value uh, compared using the last granted reputation reward plus one as a tracking variable. Basically what this is doing is seeing if there's a little blue dot at each point and determining are there any that we haven't already collected? So if we come back and look at our implementation of update regular reputation reward, we're gonna do something slightly different. Uh, slightly different. I guess this should be named, I probably should have named this prepatch, right? Because it's a prefix. So we're going to use the same attribute matching or mapping to update the, or, or prefix patch the update regular reputation reward method, of the reputation reward service. And again, we, we have our instance variable coming in, as well as the, the points integer, which is part of the original method signature. So we can see here, this is void update regular reputation reward, which takes in an argument of int points. So uh, the first thing we want to do is double check that value, right? We want to we want to replicate their code and say that if we've already handled this reputation because the last granted reputation reward value is greater than the points we're looking at, then just return false. We're not going to run our own function and we're also not going to run the original function. However, if this is not the case, if we have a reward to collect normally, then we need to change the way the game's code works. So we're going to count the regular rewards to correct, to collect, to get a value for how many that might be, right? Normally this is only gonna be one, but I guess sometimes there could be weird scenarios where you collect more than one. I'm not quite sure. I think this will almost always be one, but we're gonna count the regular rewards that we would normally collect, and we're gonna update the last granted reputation reward to say, okay, we've already handled those. So we're not gonna collect any regular rewards. Instead, for each regular reward we should have collected, we're going to once again invoke that serviceable.effect service and grant one wildcard pick, right? So we've replaced the regular rewards with our wildcard rewards, and now we need to complete the rest of the original function. So we're just copying code from the original function here, making it work with our own instance variable, and then finally returning false. So this will run instead of uh, the original method, right? Let's go ahead and rebuild this. Remember, this automatically copies and updates the DLL in the Bethanex plugin directory. Uh, so we're going to go ahead now and run the game again. And try our little experiment a second time. Okay. Uh... Uh, I've just realized I may not have game sound here. Oh, well. Um, <laughs> all right, we definitely want harpies. We want some building materials. All right, let's embark.
Okay, so we've got our three starter picks. That's great. Let's grab a Weaver and a couple others. Uh, we've got five Harpies, so three Harpy Houses should do the trick. And let's build a Weaver as well. We probably don't need the Weaver. But let's get, let's get that started. And we'll see, as soon as they generate some reputation, we'll see if we've now successfully replaced the standard reward with the wildcard reward we want instead. And it looks like success. We have another wildcard pick. So there we go. That's going to be uh, my tutorial, my brief tutorial on how to get some basic modding done uh, here in uh, Against the Storm. Uh, many thanks to the creators of the, um, the Bepinex plugin, the Harmony system, uh, the uh, fun little mod developer who set up the template for us, uh, as well as my good friend uh, Gnome de Plume here, whose mod posts on Reddit gave me the inspiration to get into this. Um, there's also a really good uh, guide here in his post. I'll put all these links in the video description, but there's a really guide, good guide uh, here on Steam that is for a different game. Um, I think this one's called something of Fury. Uh, Streets of Rogue. Streets of Rogue. There's a, it's basically exactly the process that I just walked you through, but it's a written documentation. This could be useful for you. Uh, and the folks who made DN Spy, and of course, Aramite for making such an incredible game out of Against the Storm. Uh, that's going to be it for this modding tutorial. Hope you enjoyed. Let me know if you have any questions below, and I'll do my best to help you. Thanks, guys. Take care. Bye.